Yeah, we've done four warrants this morning. We've arrested three men and two women. That's a culmination of many months of investigation by my detectives working with community officers, responding to public information and public concerns. Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire, Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this news comes from up north in Liverpool. Two weeks ago we covered the story of the Cullen twins that were jailed for the biggest armoury of firearms ever discovered by Cheshire Police. And last month in Liverpool, the Nash brothers were jailed for a similar find. Yesterday one of their couriers were actually jailed as well. But before we talk about that story, we'll explain who the Nash brothers are. Terence and Anthony Nash were key figures in a gang that played a key role in Kirkby's drug trade. The prosecution said in court, they found firearms, drugs, cash and also several grenades when they raided them to a surveillance operation. Terence Nash had a stash of weapons. He had two revolvers, a sawn off shotgun stored in a safe house in Kirkby. The arsenal they said backed up their cocaine dealing operation that ran alongside his older sibling Anthony and they had a network of associates to distribute the drugs. The brothers were today sentenced to a total of 39 years and 15 months. Two members of their gang Dennis Boynton and Ronnie McPadden were also locked up and John Farrell and Joseph Hardy had their sentencing postponed next month due to issues relating to Covid. The Nash brothers drug conspiracy was first out of blow on September September the 11th 2019. Police watched for the second time in a month one of the frontline dealers drive around Kirkby selling drugs. The dealer's home was raided and a search team found 300 small knotted bags and 201 of them contained cocaine and the others were filled with diamorphine. Police continued to monitor the gang's activities watching separate meetings involving key figures on September the 17th the same year. Over a six hour period officers tracked a secret meeting at their home and Anthony Nash was later in a police chase through Kirkby Town Centre involving his Audi Q3 which was then found at his safe house in Bewley Drive. In the early raid that started just before 2am that led to the discovery of a safe that was removed and cut open. Inside the safe they found £32,000, 292 grams of cocaine. This was given a street value of £11,500 and a top end value of 29 83 minutes later, the safe was removed from Terence Nash's house. 83 minutes after the safe was taken from the house by the police, Terence Nash went to a Holiday Inn Express in the Kirkby area with Dennis Boynton. He was the one who was tracked to the safe house hours before the police raided it. Keith Sutton prosecuting told Manchester Crown Court that Mr Nash and Mr Boynton had avoided their respective homes that night. They knew they were linked with the contents of the safe found in Bewley Drive. Forensic analysis revealed the DNA of both of them on bags containing money and drugs and the drugs were 83% purity. The following day, police watched as Anthony Nash, Farrell and Hardy met at Farrell's Minstead Avenue home. They stopped Hardy shortly after he left the property in a Toyota Aventus and inside his pocket was 492 grams of cocaine with a purity level of 87% and a potential street value ranging from 19,000 to 49. Police examined an iPhone that they found on him and they discovered a message to Anthony Nash that he was writing on the device when it was taken from him. It said simply, sorry Tony. As one police officer swooped in on Harding and the second targeted the address in Minstead Avenue where the gang members met up minutes earlier, Farrell was arrested inside the home. They found a locked safe that was bolted to the floor and it was removed and they found 7 kilograms of cocaine with a potential street value of 277,000 and a top end value of 690. The packaging of the drugs was forensically linked to both of the Nash brothers. A search team returned to the property the following day and discovered an arsenal of weapons that was hidden in the loft. Two revolvers, one that was loaded, a sawn off shotgun and ammunition and five grenades were found in the search. Jurors sat on the Nash brothers trial last year and acquitted Anthony of any involvement with the weapons. But Terence, whose experts believe had contact with the guns, 
and the bag in which the grenades were seized, was convicted of a series of firearm offences. The drugs bust at the safe house in Liverpool sparked panic and led the Nash brothers to flee the country. Mobile phone data showed they travelled to North Wales in the town of Holyhead and they caught a ferry to Ireland and then flew to Spain to escape the police. Opening their trial in October, Mr Sutton told jurors Anthony Nash and Terence Nash knew they had to get away from the area and if possible get out of the jurisdiction. While attempting to lie low, cracks in the relationship began to show and they flew home to England in December, only to be arrested on their return. Anthony Nash from South Dean area of Kirkby was found guilty of conspiracy to supply Class A drugs and possession of criminal property. The 36-year-old was portrayed in court as a hard-working dad, a loving man and a loving family man. The judge said he only had his self to blame for being locked up when his children grew up. The judge dismissed the claims of the acquittal of the firearm charges meant he did not play a leading role in the gang. Terence Nash from West Vale Avenue in the same town was convicted of two counts of conspiracy to possess firearms with intent to endanger life and conspiracy to possess ammunition and firearms and explosives. He pled guilty to supplying Class A drugs and the judge described his plea and subsequent evidence to the jurors as a deliberate attempt to manipulate the court. Terence Nash was described as being held in high regard by his friends and family and understanding the impact the sentence would have on them. The 35-year-old would use his time behind bars properly to correct and better himself, they said. The judge said Terence, like Anthony, was responsible for the impact on jailing will have on his family. Their associate Dennis Boynton from West Vale pleaded guilty to a Class A drug possession and possession of criminal property. The 43-year-old had a short involvement in the conspiracy and was highlighted because he did not flee the country. McPadden from South Dean was also found guilty of possession of Class A drugs and his barrister said the value meant that his plea went in his favour. Sentencing the men on Tuesday morning, the judge said the group was undoubtedly a significant gang of criminals and commended the Merseyside police team on their downfall with their tenacious efforts. Terence Nash was jailed for 24 years and Anthony Nash was handed down a 15-year sentence and Boynton was jailed for 7 years and 3 months. McPadden was given 6 years and 4 months. Farrell from Minstead Avenue was admitted to counts of conspiracy to possess firearms and explosive substances and Joseph Hardy, 55, from Kirkby admitted conspiracy to supply Class A drugs. Following the morning hearing, Detective Inspector Christopher Lowe from Merseyside told the police that the meticulous investigation and working alongside the Crown Prosecution meant we have dealt a massive blow to the drug trade in the area. It's also led to the seizure of firearms and grenades and, and when I use that word you think what place at all and what individuals at all who use firearms and grenades, no place at all. I'm really pleased to be able to demonstrate to the public today the activity that we're undertaking leading to the arrests that have been made and we will continue that activity out today to in order that we can make streets of Kirby. And if this was true, then I'm sure that we won't be seeing anything like this in the future. But I doubt that that will be the case. So I really appreciate you joining me for this story. I hope both of these brothers can sort their lives out when they come out of prison. And I wish them all the best. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.